I gave this form three coats altogether like you see me doing here. I don't know if that was a good idea or a bad idea, but I figured too thick is probably better than too thin and end up with stuff sticking together that wasn't supposed to. And you can't hear it, but I've got my room air cleaner going to sort of circulate the mist away from my face here. I don't know if this stuff is harmful or not. I don't remember reading anything on the can, but I'm sure you're not supposed to inhale it. Okay, I think that's about it. Maybe even a tiny bit too much. Oh, probably wondering why have I got a string on the end of this? Well, I'll show you. Because I want to use that little scoop again, I want to get as much out of it as I can. And this is the only way I could think of doing it. Now I've already weighed this little container and it weighs 33.2 grams. So I'll just subtract that from whatever this weighs now. Three twenty eight point seven minus thirty three point two equals. Okay, so this actually what's in there weighs two hundred and ninety five point five grams. Well, ten percent of that would probably be twenty nine point five five. Grams. Now, as I mentioned before, this little scale, it does have a tear function. And I know what I could do is I could turn it on and then just put, put this on here. And it's, it's, this thing weighs 2.5 grams. Push the tear and it'll zero it. And then I just add my 29.5 grams. However, I also know from experience that this thing has a tendency to shut off if you don't do anything for a while. And I don't know how long this is going to take me. So it's going to be a lot easier to just, uh, you know, do it this way. Okay, we're going to bring it up to 32 grams. And I'm going to try not to make a mess. This may not pour too well. Maybe what I should do is put a little, little cloth under here. See what happens. If I get too much, I can always. Oh, that was pretty close. That's very close. Let's put in a few drops more, and then I'll pull some off with the eyedropper. Okay, so if I take off four tenths of a gram, it should be perfect. Makes sense to me. Now, from the time I add this catalyst to the base, I've got 45 minutes at the most. I don't think it's going to take me that long. And I'm going to thoroughly stir for at least five minutes. So I may as well shut the camera off here. Okay, got a little over five minutes now, and uh, I uh, did a fairly good job. Made sure that I did it the way you're supposed to, you know, scrape the sides and the bottom and scrape off the stick periodically. So you'll remember in an earlier episode, like yesterday, I said I was going to uh, degas this. Well, that's what I want to try to do here. 
I also want to save this stick. I don't have very many left. Okay. Now because I realize that there's a chance that this is going to foam up and run over, I'm going to put it in the ice cream pail here. Here we go. I realize that in past series, if you watch them, I've explained this to death, but just in case you happen to be a first-time viewer here and you wonder how come so much air is coming out of there, well, actually what happened was when I was stirring it, I folded in a lot of little tiny micro-bubbles, and when we get down to a near-perfect vacuum, those micro-bubbles have maybe uh, changed in volume up to, oh, a thousand times, who knows, maybe more. So what's happening is they're expanding, floating to the surface, sort of frothing it up. Eventually it slows down a little bit. Uh, but I can well imagine this thing would probably bubble away for a couple hours. The vacuum pump has been running for just over four minutes now and I do realize that leaving it run longer would make it better, but just marginally better. It's probably about 99% as good as it could possibly get. Now that's my uneducated, unprofessional opinion, but I think it's 99% as good as it's going to get. Well, I do realize that there were still little bubbles coming out, but I think for the most part we got it. Okay, I'm going to try and pour from a side that doesn't, that hasn't had anything on it yet, and that way I'll know that the, uh, I'm not getting any stuff that isn't thoroughly mixed. And this side right here is, oh, there's stuff there too. Let's find another one. No, that's not too bad. Okay. All right, here we go. Now if I calculate it properly, this should uh, pretty well fill this container. Now feel free to click on the fast forward button anytime you like. I'm just running it at real time here so that you'll know how slowly this stuff pours. Give you an idea of what it's really like if you want to try and do it yourself. May as well fill it up because all that's going to happen with what's left in this is just going to get thrown out. So, the more heavy duty my mold is, at least this is my thinking.
Oh, that's what appears to be a bubble there. What is that? Probably from when I first started to pour it in, I probably got a bit of an airlock going on. Okay. Well, I hope any airlocks I got are going to work their way to the top. Well, we're 20 minutes into the mix and uh, yeah, turned out pretty good. Well, we'll see what we've got tomorrow. Well, we're about 51 minutes into the mix here. And I was going to close this video off, but I think I just want to see here what is happening down there. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's stiffening up pretty good. Many of you older guys like me will remember that detective movie Columbo. And Columbo used to always say, oh, one more thing. Well, this is kind of like that. I just want to check this one more time. We're three hours and 40 minutes now uh, into, into this mix. And I haven't touched this yet. This is the bottom anyway. If I, if I spoil it, who cares? Oh yeah. And one more thing I want to show you. Remember my little scoop? Well, most of it dripped out. And I will be able to reuse this again. Now we're done. We'll see you tomorrow for the demolding. Thanks for watching. You too, Jackson.